Good morning, Wedge. The Reds of Rogue Squadron is still back at base, but I thought we could take an early morning run through Beggar's Canyon. Hey, what's going on, guys? Guess what? Lore plays are back. I'm sorry it took a little while after Solo came out in order to get back into this. Uh, basically just didn't have time because there was so much to cover after Solo, but I finally found a chance to sit down and play one of my all-time old favorite games, Rogue Squadron. Uh, I chose it because we haven't done, like, a flight-based game yet, and, uh... This one, it's not my favorite of the bunch, but since I had it on Steam, <laughs> uh, this is the one I was going to start with. I I prefer uh, Rogue Squadron 2 for the GameCube, but we'll get to that one later. It makes more sense to play this one first anyway, but uh, let's talk about this first mission and how we got to this point in the timeline. This is six months after the events of A New Hope. So, shortly after the Battle of Yavin, the surviving members of Red Squadron formed both Renegade Flight and Rogue Flight under Commander Nara. Luke was given flight leader status over the Rogues, and the Rebels started to send their best pilots to fly with him. By the time of this mission, they had already flown a couple of successful missions, uh, and for some reason right now, we're using Tatooine as a base, and some unknown bounty hunter let the Empire know that Skywalker had returned to his homeworld, so they set up an ambush to try to draw him out and kill the rebel hero that blew up the Death Star. Now, we're supposed to be flying through Beggar's Canyon, and that's not really the case. I mean, this is basically every major geographic landmark in Tatooine just crammed into one area. I mean, you can see Beggar's Canyon, uh, but also Jabba's Palace, the Sarlacc Pit, the Crate Dragon, uh, there are a few homesteads and just a random sand crawler. Uh, there's a lot going on here, so don't ever use this as, like, some sort of geographic, uh, feature for Tatooine, because nothing here is accurate. Also, dewbacks explode, who knew? Um, but I think the point of having it start in Beggar's Canyon was for it to be, uh, like, an introduction to Luke's homeworld, because, I mean, that's where he and Biggs both learned to fly. And I kind of wonder if the rest of Rogue Squadron is just sick of Luke talking about Beggar's Canyon, maybe. Like, you know, that's how I learned to fly, and I'm the best rebel pilot there is, so I'm just going to take everyone, all the rogues, to Beggar's Canyon so they can be as good as I am. And they're like, I mean, I graduated from Flight Academy, but, you know, whatever. Uh, but now we are closing in on the end of the level. This is, as always, like, the, the tutorial levels seem to go by very quickly, but... Uh, this is the ambush at Moss Eisley. In order to try to drive Luke out of hiding, a bunch of TIE bombers start bombing the city. And it works, like, here we are trying to stop this attack. But, like, did they not expect us to actually show up? Were they just hoping that they could bomb the city and nothing else would happen? Because there's no one here to actually fight us. Like, even the bombers don't attack us, they just attack the city, and all we're supposed to do is stop them. Why didn't anyone come to actually kill Luke? What's going on here? There's zero danger to us, but, you know, whatever. We, we drive off the attack, and that's the end of the level. So, like I said with these tutorial levels, the first video in lore plays are usually pretty short. Uh, but I will be doing this every week for every level, so make sure you subscribe to keep up with all that, and if you haven't already, please uh, like the video. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.